Sure. Welcome, everyone. I'm Leo Bray, coming to you through Kristen Olsen's Urban Yoga Center. We're here in the northeast corner of Ruth Hardy Park. Ruth Hardy Park. I'm from Dorchester. Um, and I'll also be here tomorrow. We have classes in the park here Thursday through Sunday morning. Check out our schedule online at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook. And there you can also visit the tip jar, make contributions to support our Zoom classes. So let's get started today. Just from a seated position or kneeling if you like. You don't have to sit the way I'm sitting. Do what's comfortable for you, kneeling or sitting. Feel the grounding contact of whatever's on the ground for you in your comfortable position. Think about the length of your spine. Feel it lengthen when you breathe in. Feel grounding increase when you breathe out. Focusing on the breath just to allow it to slow down and get deeper as we start. Taking in the movements of your breathing and the way those movements feel. And noticing whatever there is to notice. Take in your environment. Take in whatever other sensations are present in your body beyond the movements of your breathing. Check in with yourself. Like a physical inventory, how's everything feeling this morning? Making particular note if anything doesn't feel good. So you can keep those things in mind during practice. And remember that you're welcome to skip or modify anything at all that I'm going to be doing. Anything I'm going to be offering, it's all optional except for the breathing. You can consider every cue a suggestion. By listening to your body, Modifying or skipping, whatever you like, you can find a practice that's best for you. And if in addition to these shared intentions, you want to set a more specific intention, personal to you, you take the time to let that finish forming and take root for a few breaths. Before we start moving around, let's take three deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth with a sigh. Let your eyes open if they're still closed. Let your chin come down towards your chest. We'll take some nice slow circles and ease tension out of the neck. Necks tend to be stiff in the morning. Roll your ear towards your shoulder. Tip your gaze up. And just continue nice and slowly in circles. If you find some tight spots, maybe you pause at the tight spots and rock back and forth a bit. Ease out some of that particular tension in places that feel tighter. If you don't find any tight spots in your neck, congratulations. You must be using the right pillow. Had a good night's sleep. Change the direction of your circles. Maybe you've already done so. Thank <laughs> you. 
And when you finish the next circle, go forward again, lift your chin. Bring your hands to rest at your thighs, rest your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, raise your right arm up alongside your ear. As you exhale, reach across to the left. Feel for length from your hip up through your fingertips. Inhale to come upright. As you exhale, let's come into a twist. Bring your right hand to the ground behind you. Bring your left hand across to your right leg. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Exhaling, explore, twisting some more. And just repeat that with each breath. Feel that lengthening. Invite some more twisting. Let your twist unwind. Come back through center. Inhaling, raise your left arm alongside your ear. And as you exhale, reach across to your right. Let your head be wherever your neck is comfortable. Inhale, come on up. Exhaling, come into your seated twist. Explore for a few breaths. Maybe going a little further. See how much feels like enough. Come on back to center. And let's come up onto our hands and knees. <coughs> Open your hands way up. Bring your shoulders above your wrists, your hips above your knees. Figuring out my angle for the camera. <laughs> Inhale, bring your heart forward. Let your head and tailbone go up. Cow pose. Exhale, draw your heart up, let your head and tailbone come down, cat pose, follow the pace of your own breath. After your next exhale, come back to the table with your spine neutral. Reach back and press into the ball of your left foot. Take a couple of breaths. Feel your leg lengthen. With the next inhale, pick your foot up. Reach straight back through the sole of your foot. With your next inhale, reach your right arm out to the side. Feel your core go to work a bit more. Bend that leg. Reach back. See if you can take hold of your foot or your ankle. If you connect with that grip, kick against your hand. Lift your knee. Lift your chin. Opening the center line of the body. Opening the shoulder. Stretching the quadriceps. Release the bind if you've got it. Let your knee and your hand come back down. Reach back and press into the ball of your right foot and take a couple breaths. With an inhale, pick your foot up, reach straight back through the sole of your foot. With the next inhale, reach your left arm to the side. <laughs> Bend your knee, reach back, see about that bind, that additional stretching. Releasing any binds, let your knee and hand down. Let's start to stand. Step your left foot up between your hands. Step your right foot up to meet it. Hang out in forward fold, exploring movement. Arms and head hanging heavy. Sway back and forth, bend and straighten your legs. A little or a lot. Whatever movement feels good to you.
Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. You now lift up halfway. Press your hands to the front of your legs. Feel for the crown of your head reaching forward away from your tailbone. Exhaling, relax down. Inhale, roll up to standing, hands up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Raise your right shoulder towards your ear. Shift it back. And let it down. And your left shoulder up, back, and down. Inhale, reach out to the side. Exhaling, reach for your shoulder blades and hug yourself. Or if you like, come to eagle arms. If you're an eagle, move your elbows and hands forward and up, away from the body and face. Inhale, spread your wings. As you exhale, cross those arms the other way. Grab your shoulder blades or take your ego. Breathe into the big space between the shoulder blades. Back of the heart space. Inhale, open up. Exhale, let your arms come down. Inhale, out and up. Interlace your fingers. Put your palms up. Look up at your hands. Lift up your heart. <laughs> Inhale to come upright. Exhale to bend to the left heel for length to both arms. Inhale up to the middle. Exhale to bend to the right. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, let your arms come down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold down. Make your way to a plank. Taking a few breaths in the first plank. Hips coming down in line with shoulders and heels. Or if you opt for a shorter plank with your knees down, hips come down in line with shoulders and knees. Exhaling, slowly lower all the way down. Keep your elbows in close. See how slow you can go. Find the strength and the slowness. But don't stop breathing. Let everything go. And tuck your toes. Rest your chin. Press into your hands. Inhale, lift your head and chest. Maybe just a little cobra. Whatever height of heart opener is okay for your lower back on each time we go through the sequence. Exhaling, rock back. Maybe pass through table. Slowly make your way to downward facing dog and walk your dog. Settle your feet up and down. Lengthening through the back body. And make your way from down dog to forward fold again. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Before we go through the next one, I'll just point out I'm doing a little variation for the sake of the camera. When I go from forward fold to plank, I'm walking my hands forward instead of stepping my feet back. When I go from down dog to a forward fold, instead of stepping my feet forward, I'm walking my hands back. That's just because of Zoom. So do it either way you want. Folks on screen, I can't see you much. So whatever works for you. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, come down. Make your way to your plank. I just didn't want anyone who hasn't seen that before to get confused by the different transitions, non-traditional stuff. Exhale, lower halfway elbows in. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Cobra, maybe upward facing dog. Exhale, back and up to downward facing dog. Make your way to forward fold again. 
Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, down. Make your way to your plank. When you're ready, exhaling lower halfway. Inhale to bring your heart forward. Exhale back and up. And we'll start to add in some other things here. Inhale, raise your right leg. Keep the right arm stacked right hip above left hip. Look under your right arm. Square your hips out. Exhale, draw your knee towards your right elbow. Inhale, reach that leg up. Exhale, draw your knee towards your nose, round your back, and plant your foot between your hands. Lean into your left hand. Inhale, reach your right hand forward. Reach it up. Reach it back. Exhale, reach up. Sweep forward. Come down. Let's do it two more times. It's sort of like three quarters of a circle. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, up, forward, down. And come up on your fingertips. Inhale, reach forward, reach up. Make your way to a crescent lunge. Find steadiness in the placement of your feet and legs. Camera adjustment here. Don't mind me. We're going to rock in our hips with an arm movement. Exhale, sink forward in your hips. Lower your arms. Inhale, glide up. Follow your breath. Make the leg movement as big or small as you want. If the high lunge becomes too much, you can drop the back knee. Maybe uncurl the back toes. Do a lower lunge with the same hip rocking. From the top of the movement, let's twist. Reach your right hand forward, left hand back. Twist to your left. Come back through center and twist to your right. Sometimes that's when you wobble, maybe drop the back knee. <laughs> you wobble, you're human. Come back through center. Exhale, bring your hands down. Step your right foot back to meet your left. Downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your left leg. Keep the leg long. Stack your hip foot under your left arm. Take a big breath for maybe two. Square your hips down. Exhale and draw your knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, reach up again. Exhale and draw your knee towards your nose. Plant your foot between your hands. Lean into your right hand. Inhale, reach your left arm forward. Up and back. Exhale, sweep up. Forward and down. Two more breaths. And then tense your fingers. And now reach forward, reach up, find crescent lunge again. For some reason, the second side is always more wobbly, at least for me. Find steadiness before you start rocking and moving your arms up and down. When you're ready, exhale, sink forward. Inhale, glide up. Movement and breath, smooth and continuous. Flowing like water. From the top, twist to your right. Come back to your center. Twist to your left. As long as we all get both sides. It seems easier to do the twist to the closed hip after doing the one to the open hip first. The only reason for that order. Come back to your center. Exhale, bring your hands down. Step your left foot back. 
take three cleansing breaths and you're down with that. Okay, your knees come down. And we're going to do a little work on our hands and feet. So first, curl your toes under. I'm just turning for the camera here. Curl your toes under. Walk your hands in towards your knees. So you come up like this. And then you're going to sit back towards your heels. I'm going to sit on my heels. But listen to your own feet. This creates a lot of sensation on your feet. Why do I sit all the way on my heels? Because I can. Because I've done this a lot and it feels good. But you decide how much sensation you have in your feet by how high you're going to sit. You could even put a prop between your butt and your heel to sit higher. So you decide how much sensation, how much foot stretch you get there. We'll stretch the hands while we do this like this. Reach your right hand in front of you, palm up. One breath per finger. We're going to open the wrist and the palm. Take hold of your pinky. Inhale, gently draw it out. Exhale, gently draw it down. We're just going to do that. One breath for each digit. Inhale. And exhale. And now you know about how long you're going to be stretching your feet. Maybe your breath is shorter than mine after you do the thumb. In case it's not obvious, you do the other hand. And when we're done with this, the counter pose for the foot stretch is the best part of the whole sequence. Yeah, and any time you can adjust the height of your seat to accommodate how your feet feel. The first time I did this, I didn't sit back on my heels and just stay there the whole time. I learned this pretty early on in my practice. So over five years ago, I picked this up. <laughs> so the counter pose is to tip forward onto your hands, untuck your toes, and bang your feet on the ground. You don't have to go that fast or that hard, but that's what my feet like. Depending on what your surface is, <laughs> be careful how hard you bang your feet. I like to really bang my feet hard. But if I were on concrete or brick, I wouldn't go that hard. <laughs> Let's make our way back up to downward dog. And maybe as a result of that foot stretch, your heels are closer to the ground. Sometimes that happens. Now inhale, your left leg up high, this time bend your knee, and then stack your hips. Here you could flex your foot and make circles with your knee in each direction, or if you like, you can flip your dog. If you flip your dog, gently flip back and square your hips down. Exhale, draw your knee towards your right elbow. Inhale, reach your leg high. Exhale, draw your knee towards your chest. Send your foot over to the right side. Rest the outer edge of your foot on the ground. Star pose. If you want to continue on to fall and fall, you can bring your right hand in towards your heart on up towards the sky. If your right hand's raised, exhaling, bring it down, plant into it. If you want, you can do a funny push-up here called a half chat. Exhale, lower towards the ground. Inhale, push up. Draw your knee to center. Reach your leg up high. Exhale, lower your leg. Inhale, raise your right leg. Bend your knee. Stack your hips. Either flex your foot and circle your knee. Or flip your dog if you wish. If your foot softly flip back. Square your hips down. Exhale, draw your knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, draw your knee towards your chest. Send your foot over to the left side. Stop pose. If you like, continue on to fall and star. Exhale, bring your hand down if it's raised. Draw your knee to center. Reach your leg up high. 
Exhale, lower your back. Inhale, lift both heels. Maybe rock onto your toes. Exhale, lower your heels. Make your way to forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, all the way up, hands overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. We'll play with some balance poses. So if you know balance is tricky for you and you like to have some support, you could step over by the wall if you've got one. If you don't have them. A tree, a piece of furniture, something to grab onto if you like. We'll play first with tree pose in honor of being in the park. <laughs> Not that I don't do tree pose indoors, but it's irresistible when I'm standing out here. Hands at your heart. Set your eyes on something at eye level that's not going to move. Shift your weight from one leg to the other with your feet planted. And if you know some other sequence you like for getting into tree pose, do it however you like. This is just one way to get there. Bring the weight into your right leg. Let the knee stay soft and responsive. Pick up your left knee. Maybe your thigh comes parallel to the ground. Like opening a door, bring your knee out to the side and then bring your foot to your right leg. You could have your toes on the ground, heel on the ankle. So the foot on the calf or on the thigh, please don't press sideways on your knee. That's one of the absolutes they drilled into me in my yoga teacher training. <laughs> Lots of things to protect knees. Knees are complex. And don't recover well sometimes. Your hands can stay at your heart or the branches of your tree can grow anywhere you want them to. Your tree may be more still or maybe there's breeze in your branches. Maybe you play with movement. Maybe you play with vines. Make sure you're breathing all the trees need there, regardless of movement or shape. If your hands are elsewhere, bring them back to your heart. Great variety of tree shapes. Bring your knee forward. Put your foot down. Shake the leg you were standing on and anything else you want to shake. It's okay to dance a bit. I have two music sources going on out here. <laughs> hands at your heart when you're ready. Setting up for the other side. You don't have to go the way I'm going. I'm shifting back and forth because I like to. Bring your weight into my left leg, raise right knee, open the gate of the hip, bring the foot to the leg. Let your arms find their expression. Maybe it's the same thing, maybe it's something else. I like this bind because it feels good in my back. For me, it took two years to get my foot to stay on my back. And it only happened after I stopped trying for six months. I went to demonstrate to a class one day how I couldn't do it, and the foot stayed there. And they said, I thought you said you could do that. They got to witness the first time, and none of us knew it was going to happen. So even just having my foot on my thigh for those six months, the pose continued to evolve for me. My hips opened more and more. My balance improved, and one day, voila. When you're ready, bring your hands back to your heart. Bring your knee forward. Let your foot down. Shake, shake, shake. We'll play with warrior three. That's a good warm-up for it. Sometimes we go right from three to warrior three, but we didn't today. So... Different ways to come into Warrior 3. If you have blocks, a gentle way to come into Warrior 3 is to stand the blocks up uh, shoulder width apart in front of you and then just leaning on the blocks, raise one leg. I didn't bring blocks here either. But the other way to come into it is from a lunge. No, don't throw me a block. It's okay. I'll demonstrate without the block. Johnny's got his block. He's going to toss one to me. So come into a lunge with your hands at your heart. And then you can spring from your lunge into warrior three like this. So come up on the ball of the back foot, all ten toes pointing in the same direction. 
and do little bounces. You can start out real small. I never know how many bounces it's going to take. But let the weight of the leg tip your torso forward. Picture your body coming parallel to the ground. Keep this standing knee bouncy, soft and responsive. Think of like a shock absorber. If you can put that raised foot down anytime, pick it up again. Your hands might stay at your heart, pressing together and pressing to your sternum for steadiness. Or you could reach your hands out by your hips, out to the side, pull out in front of you. Lower your leg and start over as many times as you like. Make sure you're breathing. Sometimes we hold our breath. You might explore binds here, too. It's fun to play with these balances. It's a great way to develop core strength. I didn't do this for this long the first several times I did it. <laughs> when you're ready to come out, exhale, lower your leg. Soft knees, inhale, slowly stand. Shake it out. Now, you can say right or left, whatever leg you just did, do the other one. What side was I on? Okay. You could also stand next to a wall as you do this or a piece of furniture and have your have a hand to reach out and grab the wall or the furniture for support. Make sure the furniture isn't like a chair with wheels. <laughs> Now, I had a friend attending a Zoom class, and she had her vacuum cleaner, an upright vacuum cleaner, standing next to her that she was leaning on it like, that That could end badly. I don't know if you want to use that. <laughs> Staying with your breath, reaching back, feeling for opening in the front of the hip socket on the raised leg. Maybe think of making a footprint back there with that raised foot. When you're ready, exhale, lower your leg, inhale, slowly stand, shake it up. I find the playfulness of balance poses is like its own benefit. I think I like to think of it as playing with the balance, not working on the balance. Let's do one more, because I feel like it. Because I think we could use a little more work in the frontal hip, what I'm feeling. So we'll start like we do with tree, with hands up high and shifting back and forth. Let the weight come into whatever leg you weren't just standing on. <laughs> Adjusting, cueing to not stay right or left. Raise the other knee. Then cross your ankle above your knee. Dial that knee down towards the ground. Flex those toes up towards that shin. Figure four leg. And think of sitting like you're going to sit down on a bench with your legs crossed. Releasing in the front of your hip and back of your knee, front of your ankle. Keep pressing your hands to your sternum and to each other. Think of those elbows approaching that knee and that foot or ankle. Stay with your breath. Spine nice and long. Now, if you make this contact with your leg, it can help steady you. You don't have to make it. it took me a while to get down this low, and today it looks like I'm only going to get one elbow. Well, maybe the other one. When you come down lower, you can play with holding your leg as you dismount, so to speak. Inhale, straighten the other leg, and cross release down. It feels neat in the hip when you support the weight of the leg with your arm. And it's also fun because it looks like you just detached your leg. <laughs> when you're ready, hands at your heart. Just back and forth. When you're ready, bring your weight into the other leg. Raise the knee. Cross the ankle. Dial the knee down. Flex the toes up. For me, those discrete steps make a difference in how the hip opens. So I always do. 
I don't want to say separate movements. I think about the stages of the transition. <laughs> Pressing your hands together, drawing energy to the midline, stabilizing the posture, exploring where it's going to go. And try not to look at the other yogis. That'll make you wobble around a lot. I was teaching a corporate class in Cambridge one day and being very wobbly, and the person directly across from me said to said through her gritted teeth, stop wobbling. And the whole class cracked up, well, except for her. <laughs> Make you wobble, don't look at me. The crowded room, it was a full class. When you're ready, inhale, stand, release, kick, kick, kick. And let's have a seat. Give the legs a break, explore some forward fold. So, first, extend your legs forward and flex your feet back towards you. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold down over your legs. If your knees want to bend on this one, just let them bend. When you inhale, think of the crown of your head reaching forward. When you exhale, think of lowering some more. Inhaling, slowly walk your hands up the front of your leg and sit yourself up. Let your arms help your legs open to whatever degree is all right for you, the edge of your comfort zone. Let your arms help your legs. Bring your left foot over to your right thigh or right knee, sort of like crease. Pivot your torso, aim your sternum at your right foot. Flex your right toes toward you. Inhale, reach up overhead. Exhale, fold over that right leg. Again, explore with your breath. Inhale, crown of the head maybe comes forward. Exhale, maybe lower a little more. And we're going to explore some movement starting from here. Open your right arm out to the side. Turn your head to follow your hand. Rotate your arm so your thumb points down. Bend your elbow. Bring the back of your hand to your low back. Might be your sacrum. Might be your left hip. Might be somewhere in between. Feel your right shoulder back. Extend the arm. Rotate so the thumb points up. Slide that hand back over by the other hand. And we're going to do the same thing with the other arm. Open your left arm. Turn your head to the left. Rotate that arm. Thumb points down. Bring the back of your hand. Your lower back or opposite hip. Feel your left shoulder back. Extend your arm. Rotate, thumb up, reach your arm up alongside your head, over your head, towards the other arm. This part of the sequence pops undue compression in the middle of the lower back. The other portion is out there too, that's specifically what this fits for. Slowly reach up. And out to the side. Bring that hand back over by your right hand. And walk your hands up your legs to sit up. Good. Let your arms help your legs. Extend your left leg. And bend your right. Bring your foot across. Pivot. Face your foot. Flex your foot towards you. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Fold on down. Explore for a couple breaths. Maybe deepening that fold.
Open your left arm to the side. Turn your head to follow your hand. Rotate your hand. Take your half bind. Feel your left shoulder back. Extend your arm, rotate, thumb up, slide your hand back over by the other hand. And open your right arm to the side. Rotate, see about the bind, see where that hand can reach, peel right shoulder back. You might surprise yourself when you reach your opposite hand. I know I did. First time it happened. My little niece grabs her foot in her hand when she does this. Of course, she's made largely of rubber bands, being still in the single-digit ages. Extend your arm, turn your thumb up, and reach that arm up alongside your head toward the other arm. Little ones are so bendy. It's really amazing. And then they're surprised when they're like, get on a bit their belly and put the soles of their feet on their head, and they say, you can't do that, Uncle Leo? No, I cannot. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember ever doing that. Maybe I can. See, on the back of my head. I don't know. Who knows what I did when I was her age and don't remember, though. Reach your arm up and out and bring it back across. Walk your hands up the front of your legs. So using your arms to help your legs extend your right leg. Then nudge your legs towards each other and bring the soles of your feet together a good distance away from you. So there's this big space between your heels and your pelvis. Bring your hands under your ankles and grab the ground. If you can't get your hands under your ankles, if your arms don't fit there, you could put your hands over your ankles, grab the ground. Walk your hands forward either way. We'll use traction in the arms for this pretzel fold. And include the neck. Let the neck disengage and let your head drop and breathe into the center of your lower back. Slowly start to scoot your hands back, press up from the ground, lift it up, keep your feet together, and now bring them in real close. Heels in close to your pelvis. Interlace your fingers, grab the tops of your toes, wriggle on your seat, bring the bones in the seat closer to the ground, tilt your pelvis forward. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Exhaling, hinge at the hips with your spine long at first. And when the long spine stops lowering, then let the neck disengage. Breathe into your hips. And maybe your elbows press to the inside of your legs and nudge the hips open further. And now slowly sit up. One more time, like your arms up your legs, lift your knees towards each other. Reach your hands forward. Feet planted, sit back as far as you can without tipping over or lifting your feet. Lift your feet a little bit, take a couple breaths. Think of the highest you can lift them and go about halfway there and take a couple breaths. If you need to, you can grab your legs with your hands. Go as high as you can for a couple of breaths. Lower about halfway, take a couple breaths. Lower most of the way, not all the way. Take a couple breaths. Put your feet down, rest your hands out past your hips, wiggle your feet further apart, let your knees go back and forth to whatever degree they can. Maybe they touch down, maybe they don't. If you want a bigger movement here, you can, as your knees touch down, sweep your arm up and lift your hips. 
It's a bit like flipping the three-legged dog, yet it's more accessible and doesn't come with that fear of falling, which could be daunting when you haven't flipped the dog before and you're working on it for the first few times. It feels very good. And it's a very pretty movement. I'm looking around other people doing it. We're going to come down onto our backs now. Bring your feet in closer and lower down. So your feet are planted, knees are pointing up. Heels in as close to your butt as you can get them. For a little bit of bridge pose, press into your feet. Inhale, lift your hips. If you want to go further here, you might wiggle your shoulder blades towards each other. Pass your hands under you and reach your knuckles towards your heels. If you're clasping your hands, unclasp them. Exhale slowly, let your hips come down. I started to say clap because there was a clapping sound going on. <laughs> Explore bridge on your own for a minute. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to go down. Find your challenges by going slower or higher. So taking extra breaths at the top. So if you want here, thinking again of my little niece, you could take wheel pose if that's in your practice. Bring your hands up beside your head. Fingertips pointed towards shoulders. And then if you press into hands and feet and lift your hips, you're in wheel. You want to be careful of your neck. Don't let your head touch down on the ground while you're in this position. So before you come out of it, you want to tuck your chin forward. Then slowly with control. And lower down. There was a time I couldn't do that at all. <laughs> and then one day I could. There's another one where I went to demonstrate to someone what I couldn't do. And I did the pose. <laughs> Wrap up your expl explorations. It's a big word. Wrap up your explorations and bridge your wheel over the next couple breaths. And after you come down for the last time, pause for a couple breaths. Bring your knees to your chest, hug your knees, explore some rocking and rolling movements, massaging your back against the ground. And I think let's take our final twist today with cross knees. You can plant your right foot, cross your left knee over your right knee. If that's not workable, you could cross your ankle over your knee instead. Reach your arms to the side. Feel your shoulder blades pressed to the ground. Keep them on the ground. Let your legs go to the right and turn your head to the left. Got some tiny ants on my hand, and I was having a fire ant flashback. I hope they're not fire ants. I really do. Come back up to center. Switch the cross of your legs. And take your other twist. So back to center, you're going on words now. I just stepped off camera to treat my hands. Reach your feet up towards the sky. Reach your hands up, take hold of your legs or your feet. Play with bending and straightening your limbs. And happy baby pose. Fun fact, Kristen Olson of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center, when she got bitten by fire ants in the park, she found that Trader Joe's grapefruit lemon hand sanitizer spray immediately neutralized the bite. So that's what I'm doing instead of my happy baby at the moment. Those looking at an empty rug, which I'm hesitant to get back onto because of these ants. 
If there's a different inversion that you'd rather do than happy babies, feel free to do it. You can invert for as long as you like. When you feel complete, start to make your way to Savasana or another resting pose of your choice. Anywhere where you can be comfortably still. For some minutes of quiet breathing, integrating the benefits of your practice. Once you find your comfortable stillness, all you really need to do is breathe. You might just focus on your breathing. You might come back to an intention you set for yourself at the start of practice today to reflect upon it. You might just let your mind drift. Not trying to avoid thinking, but not aiming to think about anything in particular. Repositioning the outdoor studio here as you all settle into Shavasana. Breath slowing down and getting deeper just as it did at the start of practice. Body settling a little closer to the ground. At the end of each exhale, fist of remaining excess tension melting into the earth. Maybe scan your body as you did at the start of practice, checking in to see how everything's feeling. Checking in with those trouble spots, if you had some trouble spots speaking up when you listened in at the start. If you're reflecting on your intention, you might think about how effective it was for your practice today. Or you might think about how you can extend that intention into the rest of your day. Listening to our bodies, taking care of our bodies, and setting intentions are not things just for when we're on the mat practicing. They're things we can do any time of the day, we can do throughout the day. We can always find new ways to do. We can always improve. Why we call it a practice. Pardon me. Pardon me. Start to give yourself some even deeper breath. Nice and slowly begin to move around bit by bit. Starting with small movement. Gradually working up to bigger and bigger movement.
taking your time, moving mindfully. When you're ready for bigger movement, sit yourself up. If you like, bring your hands up by your heart. Thank you for sharing practice today. The light within me sees and honors that same light in each of you. Namaste. Again, I'm Leo Bray here for Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center. Check us out at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook. Check out the tip jar that's there. And check out the class schedule. We have classes on Zoom every day of the week and four mornings a week here in the park. Mind the ant net. Questions and feedback are always welcome. That's for folks on Zoom, folks in the park, and the folks on YouTube later. Have a great day.